In this video, we're going to talk about some of the advantages of the Darlison pair transistor. This particular transistor is very useful for achieving very high current gains. The way you design it is by connecting two NPN transistors together. This is Q1, the first transistor, and this is Q2. So what you want to do is you want to collect, I mean not collect, but connect the emitter of the first transistor to the base of the second one, and then connect the two collectors of the transistors together. Now let's say that the current gain, the DC beta value of transistor one is 100. And we're gonna say that the current gain of the second transistor is 200. What is the net current gain of this Darlington pair transistor? Is it 100? Is it 200? Is it 300? Is it something much higher than that? What would you say the answer is? Well, let's find out. Let's start with an example. So let's say that the base current, or the current that's entering the base of the first transistor, we're going to say it's a very small number, 0 0.01 milliamps. With this information, you can calculate the emitter and the collector currents of each transistor. Feel free to pause the video and work on that if you want to. Now, to calculate the collector current going into transistor 1, it's going to be the DC beta of Q1 times the base current. So beta 1, that is 100, beta 2 is 200. So this is going to be 100 times 0 0.01 milliamps. So the current that's entering Q1, which is IC1, that's going to be 1 milliamp. It's 100 times larger than the base current. Now, what is the emitter current leaving Q1? The emitter current is going to be the sum of the base current and the collector current. So IB1 is 0 0.01 milliamps. IC1 is 1 milliamp, so it's going to be 1.01 1 .01 milliamp. Now, IE1 is the same as IB2 because that's the same amount of current that's entering the base of Q2. So now that we know IB2, we can calculate IC2, that is the current that's flowing to the collector of the second transistor. So IC2, that's going to be beta 2 times IB2. So beta 2 is 200, IB2 is 1.01 .01 milliamps. And so that's going to give us a current of 202 milliamps. Now, to get the emitter current, that is IE2, we need to add up IB2 and IC2. So that's 202 plus 1.01. .01. That will give us a current of 203.01 milliamps. So that's how we can calculate all of the currents when dealing with a Darlington pair transistor. So now let's calculate the overall beta for this entire transistor pair. So to do that, we're going to take the total collector current and divide it by the initial base current, which is basically IB1. Let me draw a picture of the two transistors as represented by one symbol. So one way in which you can show the Dalton pair transistor is by drawing a picture that looks like this. And then you can enclose it in one circle. My circles aren't perfect, but you get the picture. So this would be the base, this is now the collector, and that is the emitter. So we have a current of 0 0.01 milliamps 
entering the base of the entire Dalton pair transistor. And the collector current, which is the sum of these two, that is a total of 203 milliamps. And the emitter current is the sum of those two, which we know to be 203.01 milliamps. So for the entire Dalton pair transistor, this is the collect, let me say that again. That's the collector current, and this is the base current. So it's going to be the net beta is equal to IC, which is 203 milliamps, divided by IB, which is 0 0.01 milliamps. So the total current gain is 20,300. As you can see, it is very, very high compared to a current gain of 100 or 200 for an individual transistor. So by connecting two NPN transistors to form a Darlington pair transistor, you can greatly increase the current, or rather the current gain of the transistors. So now, how can we get this number if we know beta 1 and beta 2? Is there a formula that helps us to calculate the net beta given the individual betas of the two transistors? It turns out that there is, but first, let me clear away a few things to get some extra space. So the formula that we need is this one. It's going to be the beta of the first transistor plus the beta of the second transistor plus the product of the two betas. So beta 1 was 100, beta 2 is 200. And then the product of those two is 100 times 200. So 100 plus 200 is 300. And 100 times 200, 1 times 2 is 2. Add the four zeros, and that will give you 20,000. And then 20,000 plus 300 is 20,300. So that's the formula that you could use if you know beta 1 and beta 2. So that's how you can calculate the net beta for the Darlington pair transistor. Now, you might be wondering how we can derive that formula where we calculated the net beta from B1 and B2. So let's talk about how we can derive that formula. The net beta for the Darlington pair transistor, as we said, is IC divided by IB. So the current flow in here is IC. And the current flow in, in this direction, this is IB. Now keep in mind, IB is the same as IB1. And also, IC is the sum total of IC2, that is the collector current going to transistor 2, and IC1, the collector current going to transistor 1. So we can replace IC with IC1 plus IC2. And then we can replace IB with IB1. Now keep in mind, IC is equal to beta times IB. So therefore, we can replace IC1 with beta1 times IB1. And then IC2, that's going to be beta2 times IB2. So that's what we have so far. Now, what do you think we need to do next at this point? The next thing that we need to do is change IB2. IB2, the current that is flowing to the second base, is the same current as IE1. So we have IB2 is equal to IE1, and we know that IE1 is the sum of IB1 and IC1. Now, IC1, that is beta1 times IB1. So we can replace IB2 with what we have here. So our net beta is now beta1 times IB1, and then plus beta2, then replacing 
IB2 of what we have here, we have IB1 plus beta1 IB1, all divided by IB1. So at this point, we can get rid of what we have here. And now let's focus on distributing beta2 to IB1 and to the other term. So we're going to have beta1 IB1 plus beta2 IB1 plus beta2 beta1 IB1 divided by IB1. So notice that we can factor out IB1 in the numerator of that equation. So if we take out IB1, we're going to have beta1 plus beta2 plus beta1 beta2 divided by IB1. So at this point, we can cancel this term. So that's the net beta for the Dalton pair transistor is beta1 plus beta2 plus beta1 times beta2. So that's how we can derive this formula.